And it has lovely three-dimensional netting with uh, flowers on it and a little bit of gold trim. It's just lovely. Very elegant, very vintage. So this month we're going to make this. It's a traditional vintage pattern that they put back in the pattern book. So it's simplicity $87.99. And I have loads and loads of this peach set just because I have it. I already own it. I have lots of it. Actually, I think it's like five yards, which is much more than I need. And I'm going to add this very delicate little lace to it. Simple. This pattern is literally a front and a back. Um, and what I want to do is I want the shorter length that are in B and C but I want the um, Ampere waistline elastic that's in view A. So I'm going to be combining them. It's really the same pattern. I'm just going to take the markings that are on the view A pattern, but I'm going to make it to the view B length. That's it. Very simple. So I'm just going to go cut out a front and a back, transfer my markings. This calls for bias tape because I'm making it in this delicate satin. I'm going to self, um, I'm going to make self bias tape. I'm going to make tape out of the actual fashion fabric so that it's not heavier. And the only thing you need is elastic. And of course, I'm going to add lace. You could add um, uh, other decorative trims. If the beautiful netting that I had made the robe out of was washable, I would add some of those beautiful roses and things, but it's not. It's a very delicate thing and this is really just a nightgown and I want you to wear it as a nightgown so I'm not going to add those to it. Let's go cut this out real quick and I'll be back here for a very fast sew. Let's get to it. Step one after you've cut out is for drawstrings. So if you, I'm going to put elastic in line. I'm not doing the drawstring but if you've decided to make this out of a nice um, delicate cotton batiste and you're going to put a very pretty little crocheted lace, something like that, sort of an heirloom looking lace, then it would be really wise to go ahead and do the drawstring treatment instead of the elastic. It just goes more with the type of fabric you're using. I'm doing the mine in satin, I'm gonna do an elastic. So let me just tell you how. If you want to do the drawstring, see this little marking? It looks like a buttonhole, and that's what it stands for. The very first thing you're gonna do before anything gets sewn together is you're going to Transfer this marking and it will be on both sides. So it'll be on the right and left of your front of your gown and you're going to interface behind it. You can, if you're doing like your batiste, you can do a woven behind it or you can do iron in type uh, interfacing, whichever works for you. It depends on how true you want to be to the vintage look. After you've done that, then you're gonna go ahead and sew a little buttonhole or depending on your sewing machine, you might even have an eyelet option where it does a little round hole. Either would work depending on what you choose for your drawstring. So you wanna make a tiny buttonhole there and you're gonna have one, you need to have one on each side, a little one right and left and they're just like an inch apart. And that way you can pull the strings through both sides so you can pull them together and tie them for your neckline. You'll do the same thing if you choose to do the empire or the ampere um, little waist area. If you want a drawstring there, I'm doing elastic in mine. But you, you have to put that in first before anything else happens. Because once you've um, put your casings in, your facings, or your, um, your bias tape, it's too late. You can't do it. Okay, so that's your first step. If, after that, they have you, if you're doing the shirt tail hem, you're going to do basting for the shirt tail hem so you can get the hem to curve at the edges to get a nice curved edge. I'm doing the straight hem, so we don't have to do that step either. So step one and two are for drawstrings and shirt tail hem. If you're not doing those things, you're going straight to step three, which is shoulder seam, which I'm going to do now, front to back at the shoulder seam. It's only three eighths of an inch. So if you're surging like I am, that's pretty much how wide a surge seam is. So I'm just gonna surge right along my edge. After that, we're gonna do the same thing for the casing. So we're gonna surge at the shoulder seams and the casings make sure you mark front from back. So I'm gonna put a little safety pin in the front of my case, my front casing and my front gown so I can tell the front from the back because they're pretty similar looking right now. 
All right, we're going to get those two things and we're going to come back and talk about applying our lace. The lace that I'm using is just a flat lace. So I've run a small little basting line right along the edge. You can see my little threads. It's just so that I can get it together to shape around the neck. I'm not trying to get really a ruffle. I just want it to see, you can see it's laying along the neckline, but not really a ruffle. It's just enough to get the shaping here. So I've pinned that down. We have a 3 8 inch seam allowance here. And then I've taken my facing, I've sewn it together, and I've gone ahead and searched the outer edge. On our directions, um, they actually say that you can um, turn and stitch that casing or zigzag the edge, whichever you prefer. I'm going to just search it. So now I'm ready to sandwich my lace with my casing. And I'm just going to straight stitch that around. This is how it looks when you've got your lace. Here's my gown, my lace, and my facing. The lace is sandwiched in between, and now I can come around and sew my 3 8 inch, and it's just going to catch just this outer edge of the lace and this casing. Then I can clip and turn it. So it's at a facing right now, but it's gonna become a casing. I'll clip and turn it, and then I'll do another line. I'm going to actually lift up the lace the second go round to do the stitching. And I'll show you that in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and pin this and sew my 3 8 I'm not surging it, I'm just gonna do it right here at the sewing machine. This is how the lace on the neckline looks right now. This is our little facing casing piece. It's going to get flipped to the other side. I just said a minute ago that I think I'm only going to, I'm gonna flip this at and stitch the casing and not catch the lace, but I've changed my mind. I, I think that I would prefer to have that stitched down. I just think it's going to look a little neater and tidier. So I am going to go ahead and stitch the casing all the way around um, wide enough that I can put my elastic in. So 3 8 to half an inch is probably um, perfect because I'm using quarter inch elastic. So I'm gonna stitch that and leave a little hole uh, to fish my elastic through in the side right here on the um, shoulder, I think. Here's the casing sewn. This is the inside. This is the outside. And I've left a little hole near one of the shoulders. Here's my little hole to put my elastic in. Now I could go ahead and put the elastic in now and sew the shut and the little neckline would be done. But I'm not going to. This is an easy thing to do towards the end. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and sew up my side seams. So we've done this step. We're gonna go ahead and sew the side seams. I'm just serging them together. Because I don't have this shirt tail hem, I have a straight hem, I'm just gonna sew all the way down to the bottom. And by doing that, I can go ahead and add my casing for my waistline elastic. So for my casing, I'm just using more bias that I made to go around. Originally I was going to use a, 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 like a hem lace for the inside, but the thing I had was not right. So we're just going to go stick with this because it's nice and soft. It won't add a lot of bulk to that seam and it'll sort of disappear um, with the elastic and it'll look fine. So that's what we're going to make for the inside and I just have to sew it on the markings from the inside of the garment. I measured for myself and the lines for the um, Empire Waist casing is too high. It kind of hits right in my bust line and I need it to be a couple inches lower so I'm just gonna lower the line down for stitching for myself. So I'm gonna finish my side seams and I'm gonna pin my casing on now and top stitch it. And then we'll finish off both casings. We'll go ahead and put our elastics in and move on to our arm side. I'm sewing down the inside waistline casing, not really waistline, empire line casing. And this is the top edge, so I'm just gonna stitch it like this. So here, I'm gonna turn this side. Here's the little opening where it's going, I'm gonna put my elastic through. So I'm stitching this edge, and then this is actually gonna get flipped down like that to make the casing, and then I will turn up this edge and top stitch that one. I'm stitching down the second side of the casing now, so you can see I folded. It looks like this, and then it gets folded over, and the raw edge tucked in, and top stitched down, and that's the casing on the inside. And then it'll be open right here at this little side seam to get the elastic in. I'm ready to fish through my elastic, through my casing, so here's the inside. You can see the outside of the neckline, so I'm gonna go ahead and just fish my elastic through. We've done this lots and lots of times where you've seen me 
um, feed my elastic through a casing so it's not anything new. We're just going to push it through. Make sure you pin down the other side in some way so that you don't suck it through because the casing is always longer than your elastic and it's easy to lose your free end of elastic inside if you don't do that. So we're just going to fish the elastic through for both pieces. So here's my neck and then here. Look at how pretty the waistline casing is on the inside. This is the Empire waist or the Ampere waistline. So I'm going to put my elastic through both of those. Um, because the pattern shows a drawstring, if you're doing elastic, what I did is I just took my tape measure and draped it around my neck to see about what I want. Now I just made this shirt um, and so I know what the elastic was for it. So that's pretty close to what I used for this. And then for the waistline, I again took my tape measure around my body at that point and then I subtracted a couple of inches because you always want the elastic um, usually two inches two to four inches smaller than the area you're working in if it's a waistline. Um, and that just pulls it in enough that it's comfortable, um, but still stretchy enough to work. So I'm gonna do that for both pieces, and then we're gonna do our arm size. This is my satin bias and my arm eye. Here's my side seam. This is the front of my arm eye. I folded back a little bit of the bias and I have right sides together, so this is the wrong side of my bias, and I'm just going to pin it around the arm side and stitch it. And when I come across to this other side, as I pin around, it's gonna come across like this. So I'll stitch across like this, and then when you fold it up, the edge that's folded will be the right side out, so it'll be a nice finished edge right there. So this is step one. Of the arm side, I've got my bias on, and I'm going to come in now and clip up to but not through my stitching line all the way around so that I can flip this around to the other side. And we're going to tuck in our raw edge, and I'm actually going to do it where this is pretty much folded in half, and then top stitch it down. And now I'm just folding under to the wrong side. So this is the right side, this is the wrong side, and this is gonna get stitched along this edge. The, this side of it will just show some top stitching, and that'll be it. And I'll go ahead and show you, here's the waist where I did the casing. So you just have little top stitching, and you can see the shearing from the elastic. And then the neckline, here's the neckline with the shearing from the elastic and the lace. All right, after this, I'm gonna put in the hem and we're done. Okay, all pinned in, I'm ready to top stitch it. And here is the arm eye, all sewn in. Very pretty and soft. All right, we're ready to go on to the hem. We're all done except for the hem. So I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see how pretty and shiny the satin is. There's our little lacy neckline. Now, um, I've gone ahead and surged my bottom edge. Depending on how you wanna finish it, you could just um, roll this twice and do like a little rolled hem at the bottom, or you can surge and turn for a hem, or you can do like I am. I have my lace and I'm going to put a lace edge on. Because of how this is, I could, I think I'm going to hem it first and then apply the lace so that I don't, the lace is sheer enough you can actually sort of see the um, surged edge through. Not real strong, but a little bit. And then I have to decide if I want um, the lace to be on the very edge like that, or if I want the lace to be mostly on the satin with just a little peak off the edge so it's just where I want to put it and it will make the gown a little longer the lower I put my lace so I'm gonna go ahead and just top stitch around my hem si je m'épanche sur toi c'est que je rêve de toi nuit du soir oh matin ça fait beaucoup je le sais bien Mais quand la brise rapporte ton parfum à ma porte, je ne pense plus qu'à toi. Ça fait beaucoup. So here's the 
here yes. are the two beautiful yes. satin pieces that I made about a month apart. I have to say this pre peach piece is really quite pretty and simple, but it looks like quite a plain Jane next to this robe. And I love the gold color of this so much. I definitely need to get some more so I can make something to match it. I have enough of this peach. I can definitely make a robe or a bed jacket or something to go over it if I want to. Anyway, it turned out pretty. Here's the simple hem. Nice and sweet. This is a polyester um, satin and can be washed and dried. And the lace will also wash and dry just fine. So. See you next week for another fun video.